we've just carried out three case studies of water operators partnerships in Asia. Uh, these case studies looked at three elements. Um, the process, um, immediate results, and then impacts on the ground. And um, the three studies uh, involve different types of partners, so, so some were from Europe, um, one was between partners in uh, the Philippines and Indonesia, so very close uh, peers, um, another uh, with Australian partner and uh, Philippines. Can you say something about your the experience, the results of what's coming out of the uh, Indonesian case, for example? Okay, there's a partnership between um, uh, Medan in, uh, in uh, Indonesia and uh, IWK water in uh, Kuala Lumpur. It was a sanitation-based walk, and IWK, um, a leader in sanitation in the region, helped um, uh, Medan build demand for sanitation uh, in the city using a tool that was uh, developed by um, USAID um, to help promote sanitation amongst people because that was really basically what was lacking. And um, the WAP resulted in um, quite some uh, new connections to the system. Um, I think there are 700 within the year of the partnership and there are 3,400 expected this year. Um, the, so the, the increased capacity of the staff uh, and a number of changes in policy in the, within the utility that are likely to lead to more substantial changes in the, in the future. And what does this say for the whole WAP uh, in general? This case studies in Asia. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it says a number of things. Um, you know, we can't draw huge conclusions from these three cases. They vary from one another significantly. Um, obviously, it tells us more about the design, the importance of design and inputs into the WAP than it does about any, you know, any, any generalization about impacts. I mean, obviously, time and finances are really essential for making a, a WAP work and foreseen results. And clearly, um, the WAPs that were most successful that showed the best results were those that, you know, where there a real relationship was built, where there was clear commitment for high level of uh, within the utility and outside, where there was external support um, by government and, uh, and potentially from funders as well. Um, so there, there are a number of key elements that were identified uh, in this, uh, uh, through these case studies. They were common to, common to all of them, sort of success uh, factors. Like. And there was some criticism in the audience that uh, I think it was the Indonesian case that it's just eight months project. Yeah. Is that not too short for a partnership, a sustainable partnership? For a sustainable partnership, certainly it's too short. But I don't think that there should be, I think one of the things was identified today, there shouldn't be any kind of, you know, time limit to these things. I mean, sometimes there's funding for a short, very, um, you know, uh, results-oriented partnership on a specific topic, and, uh, you know, it might achieve its uh, its aims, and the partnership may continue beyond that. Um, you know, there's not funding for WAPs to go on forever everywhere. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously the longer a relationship that can be built, the better, the more room there is for trust to develop, um, for, for you know, follow-up funding um, to be established. I wouldn't say there's a whole lot new. I think we know what makes WAPs, WAPs work. Um, what we need now is, is funding to make that happen on a more systematic basis. Yeah.